consider a circle of radius 1. Draw an inscribed regular 2n gon. Let's let i sub 2n be the area of this inscribed 2n gon. Next, draw a circumscribed regular 2n gon, and let's let c sub 2n be the area of this 2n gon. Now, draw an inscribed regular n gon, and let i sub n be the area of this n gon. And finally, draw a circumscribed regular n gon, and let cn be the area of this regular n gon. The radius of the circle is 1, so this highlighted distance is 1. Now let's let a be the distance from the center of the circle to the side of the regular inscribed n gon. And let's let b be the distance from the center of the circle to the vertex of the circumscribed regular n gon. Let c be half the length of the side of a regular n gon, and let b be half the side length of the circumscribed 2 n gon. To find the area of the inscribed 2 n gon, we use this triangle and rotate it 2 n times. The triangle has a base of length 1 and a height of length c. Therefore, the area of the inscribed 2 n gon is 2 n times 1 half times c, which simplifies to n times c. The area of the inscribed n gon can be obtained by taking this triangle and doubling it, and then rotating the result n times. The triangle has a base of length a and a height of length c, so therefore we can get the area of the inscribed n gon by taking 2n times 1 half a times c. This simplifies to n times a times c. Similarly, the area of the circumscribed n gon can be found by taking this triangle and doubling it and rotating the result n times. The triangle we started with has a base of length b and a height of length c. Therefore, the area of the circumscribed n gon can be obtained by 2n times 1 half times b times c, which simplifies to n times b times c. Next, let's find the area between the n gon and the 2n gon. This can be obtained by taking this triangle and doubling it, and rotating the result n times around the circle. The small triangle we started with has a base of length d and a height of length b minus 1, so it, the area enclosed is 2n times 1 half times b minus 1 times d which simplifies to n times b minus 1 times d. We can also find the area between the two 2n gons, c2n minus i2n, by looking at this small triangle and rotating it 2n times around the circle. The small triangle again has a base of length d, but this time has a height of 1 minus a. And so the enclosed area is 2n times 1 half times 1 minus a times d. This simplifies to n times 1 minus a times d. Now let's look at three ratios of these areas. First, the ratio i2n over in is equal to n times c over n times a times c, and this simplifies to 1 over a. Second, we look at the ratio cn over i2n. This equals n times b times c over n times c, and that simplifies to b over 1. And finally, we look at the ratio cn minus c2n over c2n minus i2n, and this simplifies to b minus 1 over 1 minus a. Now let's focus only on the two n gons. Let's rotate the circumscribed n gons so that the two n gons line up, and furthermore, let's just focus in on this sub triangle here. Inside this triangular diagram, we have this highlighted triangle, which has a hypotenuse of length b and a side of length 1. We also have this smaller triangle, which has a hypotenuse of length 1 and a side length of length a. These two triangles are similar, and therefore we see that 1 over a equals b over 1. We can also find a smaller triangle in the triangular diagram up here in the corner. This triangle is quite small, but it has a hypotenuse of length b minus 1 and a side length of length 1 minus a. It's similar to the bigger triangle, so b over 1 equals b minus 1 over 1 minus a. The three quantities appearing in these two equalities are precisely the ratios we found before looking at the ratios of areas of the n gons and 2 n gons. Therefore we see that i sub 2 n over i n is equal to c n over i 2 n, and that's equal to c n minus c 2 n over c 2 n minus i 2 n. We can use the first equality to see that i sub 2 n is equal to the square root of i n times c n, and the second equality 
gives us C2n equals 2cn i2n over cn plus i2n. The first equation says that the area of the inscribed 2n-gon is the geometric mean of the areas of the inscribed n-gon and the circumscribed n-gon. And the second formula says that the area of the circumscribed 2n-gon is the harmonic mean of the areas of the circumscribed n-gon and the inscribed 2n-gon. We can use these two formulas to recursively compute the areas of the inscribed n-gon and the circumscribed n-gon when n is a power of 2. So to start with, let's draw the inscribed square and the circumscribed square when n is 4. The inscribed square has area 2 and the circumscribed square has area 4. And we can use the formula to find directly the area of the inscribed octagon and the circumscribed octagon. We can apply the formula again to find information about the inscribed 16-gon and the circumscribed 16-gon. We can continue this process indefinitely, and the inscribed n-gon and the circumscribed n-gon both get very close together and eventually match the circle. As we fill in all the values, this is the table that we get by repeated use of the two formulas. These two formulas that are highlighted are now known as Gregory's Theorem and we just use them to find the approximate value of pi to be 3.14157 because the unit circle has area pi and these polygons are getting closer and closer to the unit circle in area.